Good evening, I'm Tim Hilchey, the chair of the Community Preservation Committee. Welcome to our meeting of February 23rd, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. Um, meeting is normally held at the municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with Governor Baker's June 16, 2021 Act, extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency including an extension of the remote participation provisions of his March 20, 2020 executive order, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, GL chapter 30A, section 20, remote meeting connection noted below. I'm not gonna read that, but, um, <clears throat> and um, I would like to take a quick um, roll call, um, Alan Swedland. Alan Swedland. Say here. He's not hearing. I'm here. There okay, is. thank you. Oh, Alan. Ben Benson. <laughs> here. My audio. Annalie Wolfgold. Present. Lily Dwight. I am here. Chuck Shattuck. Present. Excellent. All right. Those formalities out of the way. Um, I'd like to. Um, Remind everyone that we, uh, our meeting guidelines are to speak one at a time after being recognized by the chair, follow the Deerfield Code of Conduct, be respectful, considerate, courteous, and please be concise and non-repetitive. I would like to introduce Lynn Rudier. Am I pronouncing it correctly? Yes, you are. Thank you. Um, Lynn is uh, a graphic designer who's worked with the town on some projects related to CCI, connected, Connecting Community Initiative, and um, She's here to listen to our little discussion about this infographic project that uh, we're talking about pursuing. Um, and at, this will be a short meeting. I, ben, did you um, invite? Uh, I did. I did invite um, Allison Wood. Mm -hmm. And I thought we had um, said she couldn't come. So I'm sorry. I apologize. She's. Oh, she's, no, that's fine. And I know what her rates are, and I can let you know. Okay, good. Well, I just uh, didn't want to get into the meat of it without making sure that uh, we were not waiting for her. Okay. No, no she's not here now. So um, this is a work in progress, Lynn, um, and um, I'm going to quickly just share the one um, one piece of infographic that I have on my hands um, that uh, shows what one town has done near us. And <laughs> is everyone able to see this? Uh-huh, yep. So this is um, a very straightforward, simple graphic that Sunderland has done to track its um, CPA participation from 2012 until last year. Um, I think we might all agree that it's easy to understand. Um, I'm not certain that we would consider it compelling graphics, but uh, it offers good, easy to understand information. Um, and it talks about what they've done during the 10 or 11 years that they've uh, actually been part of this process. And um, so now that I've done that, um, I'm gonna do one other bit of sharing, which um, I need to open up a couple of files. All right. And these are, uh, I'll do them one at a time. Well, actually I'll start with Deerfield. Uh, what, are you, what are folks seeing? Are you seeing Sunderland? Deerfield. No. We see Deerfield. Okay, because yeah, uh, both of these are open on my screen. So this is Deerfield, okay. The home see, page, yeah. This is the current homepage for the Community Preservation Committee. 
And um, in addition to the fact that we don't have a full complement of members, um, there's a lot of blank space and there's not a tremendous amount of usable information here. Um, and so now I'm going to... The other thing I would point out about that is it uses a horrible font and it's all text. And you can bet there's not one screen reader that can read that just saying for disability access. Yep. And so this is similar to what we have, except it's got a little more um, stuff on it. And um, they actually have a lot more links when you get inside their pages to various things that are important information for people to have. Amherst has a little more dynamic page, but I agree with Lily that um, you know the, the typefaces and so forth may be dictated. I don't know, you'd know this better than me, Lily. They might be dictated by the style that the town has chosen. Um, but it's uh, dictated by the vendor the town selected and that they selected again. <laughs> unfortunately mm -hmm. but they i think that we're getting the upgraded plan whatever that means so we may have more flexibility i don't know so lynn from those three elements that you've seen I, the first thing is as i say we're, we're looking to take the information about deerfield's participation in cpa and making it understandable and some sort of visual way for for us to be able to place this on our website. Go ahead, Lily. So one of the things, uh, <clears throat> that first table that you showed is a table. And I will say that the average human is allergic to tables. <laughs> I, honest to God, <laughs> having tried to get people to look at them. And it doesn't tell a story. It just spits stuff out. Whereas if we had timelines with things with monies going up and down showing different colors for historic and parks and rec or or something that shows activity that shows development um, even though we've spent all our money on cemeteries so far as i can figure we're, we're about to change that right um but anyway that's I, that's just something that i think that um we're not going to be able to escape our hideous website as far as I can tell. Um, but if we had truly an infographic that told a story right up front, that um, that it would be sweet if we could embed links in it so that if somebody wanted to see, oh, what was that big spike in open space? And they would click on it, it would maybe take them to the park application. And that might be getting too sexy, but just even to tell our story um, in a way that, and, and, and I, not just because people are allergic to tables, but also because every year at town meeting, I remember Alan having to do this for years and you do it now, the community preservation committee has to get up and, and defend its existence, right? Um, what have you guys been doing? We don't know anything. and. Wouldn't it be sweet to be able to tell the story, not in a table, but in a picture that you can see by looking at it, just grasp. So that, those were my thoughts about what we're trying. Um, okay, does uh, <clears throat> anyone else have any, I may ask you to show the CCI thing if you are able to, Lily, at some point, um, but does anyone else have any thoughts about, and I wasn't advocating by the way, yeah. Um, the table. I was just saying this is um, this well, is the closest information. thing we've seen to anybody doing something. So I will yeah. say that it's miles ahead of what we have on our website. <laughs> Chuck, yeah, I, I'll echo those comments. But I will first say, as a CPA, I I, I appreciate a good table and a good spreadsheet. However. <laughs> Um, I, I, think there, I think there's a time and a place for those. So um, I, I think, um, and, and I echo your comments, Lily, I, I, I think that's spot on. I, I think it's a matter of how we leverage the space that we have, um, recognizing that white space is always a good thing rather than overcrowding things. And I, and I like the idea of telling a story, but I do think it's worth balancing 
summarizing some data and summarizing it in a nice concise fashion and then telling a story and allow people to kind of click through to more detail. And I think you were hinting at that as well. So just want to say, you know, I think it's balancing those aspects and I think that's, you know, kind of what we're trying to do. Anna Lee, do you have any thoughts? You're on mute. I like the balance of both, uh, that a, a picture can spark enough interest so that somebody wants to press the button and look for more detail. Yeah, it's really hard to argue with what Chuck has presented. Yep, I, I, I think that the people probably receive and interpret data differently. And, and I think a lot of us are visual creatures, but then there are, there is the simplicity of somewhere, it doesn't have to be the first thing, but somewhere in there, if, if someone wants to just look at raw, here's the numbers. And links sounds great, Lily. I, I think that um, Lynn, you, you did a connecting community initiative um, graphic that allowed people to click through to the various boards that are, you know, like the conservation commission was selected. I, I did that clicking part. Oh, you yeah, did that. Yeah, she, she made it happen. I did, I did the graphic, but Lily made it. Oh, Lily. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sounds like you should be uh, heading this project with, with uh, Lynn or, or whomever we end up bringing I, on. Board. I don't think we'll, well, yeah. We I'm kidding. Work, yeah, you know, work with the town to get the links. Yeah. Um, Alan, do you have any thoughts? No, I, I'm, I'm liking what, what I'm hearing. I think it, uh, it's true. I mean, I, I'm, uh, I do a lot with data, so I'm, I, I sort of sort that out pretty quickly. But I like the idea that there's some, um, something, some animation, some color, some, a story. I think Lily's spot on with uh, mm -hmm. having having that be built in. Well, we seem to have come to yes, Lily. So I just have uh, another question. Since you mentioned CCI, it sparked me. Um, if, if for those of you who have not been to the CCI website, I actually got agreement from Town Hall to do this. Um, I created, I bought a domain and stood up a site. Um, I think it was on like Zyro or Wix or somebody inexpensive. And all I do on that site is it's, it's, very cheerful. It has all the committees that participate in CCI. It has their names um, and you can click on them and it takes you right to their page in the Deerfield town website. So you don't have to go like the drop down list A to Z and da 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 da. I use it all the time to navigate our web town website. But the reason I bring it up is we could create a CPC website page that would link back to the town's page for the CPC, but would be able to show this graphic and have links that drill down to actual data and things like that. If it's, um, it, and to be fair to the folks in town hall, it's going to take a, quite a long time for them to convert to this new version of their website and stuff. So um, like it costs money. So we'd, we'd buy the domain like deerfieldcpc.org or something like that. Um, and Zyro is like $120 a year, but we, it would be our front page that, um, that we could use. I don't think it's as intuitive a thing as with CCI, but um, it's just a possibility I put it out there. Um, yeah, I think that sounds like a reasonable idea. Let's explore that um, if, if everyone else agrees. Um, and, you know, we might have a thing that says Deerfield CPC by the numbers, which takes you to a, a graphic that's very data driven. And then we might buy the pictures or, you know, and our story. And so all of those things could be useful. And uh, I like the, the interactive dynamic, you know, and we have administrative funds, so we could pay a yearly fee to support that. So does anyone, um, since this is not a very well-formed 
idea, as you can see, Lynn. <laughs> um, does anyone have anything else uh, that they think might be meaningful for Lynn to hear? Um, or um, what I was going to propose is if we don't, and I'll wait for your answers. Is everybody okay with Annalie? Well, maybe if Lynn could articulate what she thinks the charge is so that we all <laughs> know that also. <laughs> well, um, I, uh, I would like to think about it rather than come up with a number off the top of my head. I'd like to show you folks two other projects that I have done that are basically infographics that got used in some very interesting ways over time. One of them is for the CHIP program at the Franklin Regional Council of Government. And Phoebe Walker discovered that people had no idea what the CHIP program was. And so um, I made a poster that summarized their first three years. And then when they started the second three years, um, the new, new funding um, increment there, we updated the poster and made a booklet about what the CHIP program had done. And at that point, we had a logo for it. So that's something that happened over time and grew out of the CHIP program's need to tell people who they were and what they were doing. And um, so in the second year, uh, the, the second three-year increment that they had, they had a better idea of who they were and we were able to come up with a more concise poster. The poster got a little smaller the second time around because they had, they, um, they listed what they had learned and one of the things they learned was that they can't do everything, which I thought was just a beautiful thing to say. <laughs> So I can send that to you. And um, I also, over a number of years, did some work for the Sustainable Food Trade Association. And um, I turned a summary of their um, annual report into a one-page graphic, infographic. And they also had uh, all of their members report in on uh, what initiatives they had undertaken in their own businesses that uh, were aimed at sustainability and accountability and, and um, environmentally responsible results. And um, we, we did that several years in a row and um, they included it on their website. I don't think they ever made it clickable, but it was, it was kind of an interesting project. And um, they, um, I'm not working with them anymore because they had an interim ex, uh, executive director who is an, also an old friend of mine. So she's not doing it and, and they're in a different part of the country now. So. But those two things, I think, might, uh, they're very different visually, but I think they, both of them handle a lot of information. And the one for sustainable food trade, each of the individual um, pieces of the uh, member reports were, uh, I, I separated them out and they went on their website as part of the report of what their members are doing. So um, I just think that those two might be interesting for you to see. And I can also look at what I charged for both of those projects and see if that, uh, what that would tell you. And um, I'm also very open to suggestion about what this, what this costs. I have no idea what your budget is, but it's an interesting project for me. It's a local project. I can get to know some of my neighbors that I don't know. So um, if I, and I also need something from you about a timeline that you have, uh, that you're comfortable with, um, because um, I'm doing right now, I've got a big project going for the Franklin Regional Council of Governments and um, 
they they're first in line, but you can come next. <laughs> Does anyone have any thoughts to share with Lynn? Um, Lily? <laughs> I'm sorry. I, um, I was thinking that we have some really exciting projects that are applications that are coming in now as we speak kind of a thing like for senior housing um, plus we have the big one for the park plus the the grammar school um, and I think that and the town commons coming in those are the ones I can think of off the top of my head and maybe um, uh, if we have some some of the images from these projects or something, or, or, to, or using icons to show that because they're real and they're concrete, as well as, um, you know, we have done, I know I, I kind of, I don't re mean to poo poo it, but we've done a lot of cemeteries. And I think that's important in Deerfield and, and people don't know, and they don't know that they don't get taken care of unless it comes through, um, through us kind of a thing. So, um, if we have imagery around these these big projects, so Lynn, we're um, putting together like all these big projects in the center of the town, and a lot and a lot of them are trying to use um, Community Preservation Act funding, and so it, it would be really great to um, get that in there as well. I think. Mm -hmm. Well. Um from a practical standpoint, I think a lot of what we're doing is gonna be driven by the fact that the town is switching web servers, uh, switching web platform or whatever, they're, they're buying a different web platform from the same company as Lily points out. And they're not really anxious to put up new stuff right now. So there is um, <laughs> a certain logic to what Lee is suggesting to have some immediacy but there's also the reality that they don't want to put anything new on the old web page, a website. So I think we have a little window and, and I, go ahead, Lily. Sorry, um, but what if we could have something to show at town meeting, at, at, an infographic? So maybe it's not on the site yet or something, but um, I, I think you know town meeting is a great place to let people know what's going on. And so if we could have something that, um, I don't know if we'll be outdoors or where we project it or something like that, or even do handouts um, yeah. for people, that might be a good thing. So, Anne Lee. Also last, uh, at the large uh, Springtown meeting, the select board did have a town information session um, so that could be a time where there could be a presentation from us as well. So there may be other opportunities um, on a little bit of a smaller scale than in the auditorium. Yeah. What does everyone think about the possibility of a handout slash infographic for the town meeting, which takes place, it's scheduled to be the last week of April, um, I believe. And it's um let's see is it april I, I i'm not sure of the exact date but i know it's it's at the end of april so that gives you the window of where we might want the first piece um since we pledged to have this be a short meeting um what i'm going to propose is that we say thank you to lynn say <laughs> please do share either by link preferably so we can all look at this on our computers or how would you propose getting um, the, 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 the two projects that you want us to look at to us? They're PDF files. And so I can send them to you and you can distribute them as uh, to whoever wants to see them. Oh, you will definitely share them with everyone. And the other thing is that um, you may tell us how you prefer to work. Um, would you, you, do you have an hourly rate plus then do you, do you prefer to work on a project basis? So if you could talk a little bit about that. I'm really open to suggestion. Okay. Um, I, I think I have just 
let me see. I have only one client right now that I actually sign a contract with. Mostly I just, I mean, I, I provide a service to you and um, I like to make it go as easily and smoothly for you as I can. And um, my, my business is just me. So I, you know, I can do it any way that works. Uh, you know, if you suggest something that's not going to work for me, I'll let you know. But otherwise, um, we should decide how we want to proceed with this. I don't know if all the information you have that I'm going to need is, is available or when it will be. And um, the end of April sounds very doable, but it actually is going to come up faster than we think. So <laughs> I don't want to promise you something I can't do on that schedule, but we should be able to get a start on it for, for that anyway. Yeah. Okay. Does anyone have any, any other um, questions or comments for Lynn? Well, I actually do have a question. Um, do, what would be helpful for you? Should we send you our past um, projects that we funded or um, it, so what, uh, what would help you begin to get a sense of the size of the project so that you could say, okay, if we do this on a project basis, it will be like X, um, or if we do it hourly, it would be X again, but a different way or whatever, mm -hmm. with X number of redos or whatever like that. What, what would help you to understand the scope that we're, of the project that we're asking? Well, um, it sounds as though, um, from what I from what I've heard here, it sounds as though the scope is going to grow over time, and that uh, we don't really know all the places it's going to go. Um, and if I'm wrong, please correct me. But that's the way it sounds. <laughs> and. Um, whatever I make for you, I want it to be as useful as possible. So, you know, it, 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 the more I know about how you want to use it, the better I can make things that are, you know, that are um, bilocational, multi-locational, <laughs> my new word for the day. Yes. Um, so, um, like I said, I, I want to provide a service to you and um, it sounds like fun and it sounds like it will get my work in, in front of a lot of people. So that works for me too. And um, you guys all sound very nice and it sounds as though you, you're working well together. So I don't have to do mediation and that's good. <laughs> um, well, yes. So let me think about it and send those things to you. And um, in exchange, get me whatever you think would be useful, whatever you think speaks clearly about what you can envision. And we can rewrite the vision over time, but um, something that you think would help me get started. Okay. Tim, okay. Did, did, did you send the links uh, to those other town websites? To Lynn? To Lynn, yes. I haven't yet, no. Yeah, but that would, that would be one possibility too to just show her. I mean, I'm sure she has easy access to ours, but uh, maybe has an opportunity to look at a couple of those. None, yeah, I can. none of which that I looked at, it was pretty brief, but none of which inspired me. No. <laughs> and they're not going to take an awful lot of time to review either. Yes, that's true. Right. right. But anyway, at least in terms of content, mm -hmm. um, they're, they're, they're certainly guidelines. Lynn, this is what I'm going to propose. I, I, like the, I like the idea that maybe we, as an initial step, focus on something that we might be able to use for the annual town meeting. That would be a project that has a focus and we could work together in the next week to get images and, and uh, information to, to you. Um, because that would give you some focus. Right now, we seem unfocused, as you sort of politely said. Um, so um, I think that uh, that would be a good initial project, and that would also maybe give us some direction about how 
we could repurpose what you've done in a better context with a better website and, and maybe with a, a domain or a, as Lily suggested, our own page that would have links that would click through to the website in a, in a user-friendly way. Mm -hmm. so, um, does that sound like if I got you that information in the next week, sooner maybe? That sounds good. I don't think I'm gonna have much time to start anything new, but I, I like to get stuff um, to look at and think about before I start working on it. I call it the back burner phase. So I, I put it on the table so that I can walk by and just sort of get my brain ready to uh, start on something new. Okay. So just send me stuff as you think of it. It doesn't have to be all at once or, you know, um, Tim, you have my email address, so. And I'll share it with other folks in case, if you don't mind. I do not mind. Okay. Because they have their own good ideas that um, might prove useful. Okay. That's great. I have a big computer. I can take lots of files <laughs> and I'll make a folder for your committee and keep everything there and print out some things too. Excellent. Well, thanks okay. for spending all the time right. to come join us. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. I'm happy to meet you all and I look forward to working with you. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Thanks a lot. Bye. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. So, All right, so um, quick question, Ellen. Um, I, I am sorry if I messed up on getting Allison to be available to listen to this stuff too, but is there any reason we could send her the same sort of information and I could give a, you know, a, a sloppy overview of what we talked about and see what she has to say? You could send her a link to the FCAT. <laughs> okay. And she could watch us if she wants to waste a half an hour, but well, yeah. She may or I may don't have any problem with that. I mean, we have just talked with her about um, working uh, for the Girls Club of Greenfield as well on rebranding. And I know what her rates are and she seems pretty reasonable. And um, she has done stuff locally and, and um, has worked for Smith College. And um, I think, you know, she'd be very happy to see what we have going on. And uh, what we have is pretty vague now. It'd be nice if someone brought clarity to it. It'd be nice if, uh, yeah, I agree. Chuck. Yeah, I, I was just gonna make that point. I, I think, you know, in, in talking about this, I think it is important to kind of be very clear in terms of what we're looking to get out of this, what the purpose and the intent is. So some of it could just be as simple as awareness or celebrating what we've already done. It could be providing a roadmap or ease of use for people that want to apply. I mean, there's different reasons or different purposes for setting up, whether it's an infographic or a series of, of, of links or whatever it could be. So I think it's it's making sure that we're on the same page of at least outlining what that vision looks like or what we're trying to accomplish. So I think that's the first thing. And then um, I'll say the smaller project or the near term one with respect to the town, the town meeting, um, one, one just kind of thought that came to mind, instead of a handout, um, I know what's becoming more popular are the QR readers. So either creating a digital graphic with a digital, with a, a QR reader and have people use their phones or another way to pull that up just to kind of you know leverage technology that's there now and it's out there on the web that you can link to a page. So save a tree or two and then you also kind of leverage technology today. So my, my, my two cents. Chuck, can we nominate you for chair of the next committee? <laughs> <laughs> if I had the time, I'd probably say yes. <laughs> yeah, well, you'd be very good at it. I this wish is tax had. season. <laughs> yeah. Um, Okay, so that I agree. I think Chuck's got a good idea. And um, could I ask each of you to take 15 minutes and say what you think the first project should be um, and try and create some sense of focus um, that we can share in, in the next three or four days and just CC everyone. I know I don't, I, I'm not asking for people. Can we just, feed. are people, maybe we could just do it right now. Um, I won't be participating, but yeah, I I All don't right. think we have the time. I, I think I need some time to think about it as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. Yep. The other thing I want to do is raise a couple of quick things that have come up. I spoke with Alan earlier today because he he called just to have a pre-conference for this meeting. 
as part of the CPC project for the grammar school conversion, um, the town is in the process of CCI chair and uh, the town administrator are looking to hire a grant writer, grant administrator on a contract basis, not as an employee. And their first project is going to be trying to raise funds for this project. And there's a March 15 or 20 deadline for applying for state grants for this kind of thing. And they're looking for a funding source for um, paying this grant writer administrator for this specific project. And it was, I suggested to Alan that since we have a budget for administrative costs that we might consider offering to a lot $10,000 for the rest of this year with a right language that says, if the grant writer is able to get grants, can the grant writer repay us from the grant and use the grant money as administrative part of its administrative function? I don't know what the grants, they might have specific rules that say, I can't use this money on the grant writer, but a lot of times grants allow you to pay the administrator or grant writer out of the grant. So that's something I was just, anybody have any quick thoughts about the logic of that or the, the worthwhileness of that? Anna Lee? <clears throat> I guess part of my question is if this kind of feels like a backroom deal you know, that um, these folks have, you know, found out about it and they're shooting for it and they're going to get it by March 15th. But, eh, you know, maybe the library needs something or maybe, I don't know, I, I would feel a lot more comfortable if uh, somehow it, there was more transparency in terms of the process of how we might provide these funds. Mm -hmm. Any other thoughts, Lily? Well, rather than out of our administrative funds, can't they apply for an emergency or, or a promise or a, as a separate thing in their application to us? Well, that was that was part of this. I mean, okay, I, this was a way to try and okay expedite it instead of having them rewrite their whole application and say. We want you to, you know, um, these are discretionary funds that we have at our, so I wanted to explore this idea. Now, one thing I am discovering in my work with Stuart Saginaw is that a lot of towns, CPCs work a lot more as if we're the power brokers, we have this power, we can decide that even if a project is worthy of consideration or is eligible for CPC funds, we have, seven projects in front of us, we're only gonna fund five of them. We're only gonna recommend five of them, even if the other two are perfectly legitimate uses. So um, in the past, we've sort of been on this path of, well, if it's eligible, then we need to bring it forward. Um, and with the demands that the town seems to be focusing on our CPC fund at this point, and to Annalie's point, the library is not eligible for pretty much anything except historic preservation uh, money. Uh, so, you know, that's, but it, it's a good thought. I mean, I understand where your thinking is. So um, we're going to end up being in a position where a lot of our funds are, are allocated for a period of years. And then only the money that's coming in from the state matching funds is going to be you know, if, if they go the bonding route where they, they try to come up with a two or $3 million um, ability to borrow money from a bank or, or whatever, um, that's gonna tie up a lot of the funds. So, you know, we may be needing to make some decisions about, you know, obviously we're a small town and there are a lot of worthy projects. So I was just, uh, hoping that we could, I, I've been looking at these other, other pages and, and how these Amherst and various other communities work. Of course, they have a lot more staff, but they are, they, they do a certain, have a certain professionalism that I would love to see us achieve. And 
partly that's a reflection of maybe me as a leader. I'm just, you know, not getting us there as quickly as Tim. Cut that out, Tim. <laughs> Thank you, Ben. No, I mean, it is. It's uh, how much time do you have to spend and-, and Yeah, but that's a but, reflection but, of your competence or your intentions. Yeah, I, I, the, we've never, as you said, we've operated in a receptive mode where we evaluate things that come in. And um, I mean, because I, I learned when I was trying to figure out ways for us to use our monies to help people with rent and mortgages during the, when COVID, you know, to avoid evictions and stuff, I did see that other towns, the committee was actively, was the one who actively put forward the idea and advocated for it and made it happen. But that isn't the way we've done things. Doesn't mean we can't change, but no, I agree with Ben and everybody else. Do not, not on you. This is on, oh. on, on, on our, our culture and maybe we can change it. Maybe we don't need to, because maybe we've got enough on our hands with everything coming in anyway, as you say. Well, I think one of the uh, issues, yeah, it, it doesn't have anything to do with uh, Tim or uh, really whoever uh, is chair. I think it partly is that as these um, CPA funds become available and as the CPC committees become more experienced, uh, you know, for a number of years there, we were lucky to get one project a year around our cycle and then maybe two or three and they were not uh, big numbers, uh, big dollars, but now we're going, we're at a point where things are going to really involve that kind of critical perspective. And uh, we, we do, I think, have a lot of flexibility with our administrative funds. Um, there, there should be a very public way and, a, and, a, and an ethical way to look into this. If we see a project that we know has a lot of support in town, um, but it, th th we do need a competent person, for example, a, a grant writer. I'm not necessarily saying that I think that's a way we should go, but I think it's something we should be open to um, for projects if uh, we find ourselves in a situation where it's a really good pie project and whoever's bringing it forward really doesn't have the competency to, to do a good job with it. Nicely said. Um, Chuck, what's your thought on that whole you know, ten thousand dollar, you know, grant writer connection, and and I agree with Ann Lee that it should be a public thing. Um, you know, I was just sharing that this idea had come up. Yeah, I agree, and, and you know, to Alan's point, you know, even if there is flexibility, I think it's making sure they have the right structure and governance around it. And to Ann Lee's point, I think transparency is absolutely critical, right? I think that's ultimately what we're trying to get. So I think it's it's leveraging what we can in having if if it's a professional or um, um, you know, somebody who's, who really knows the grant writing process, I think that's fine. Um, but in terms of, of using administrative funds or however, I, I, I think at the end of the day, it comes down to transparency. So, mm -hmm. so and, we need to get a lot of people. No, and also that, that, that there isn't necessarily a magic number because it's really going to depend on yep. the, how good the, uh, grant writer is and what their connection is to the community and so on. Yeah. So. Um, it sounds like this is not going to work for this uh, this project because they're they're hoping to meet a March deadline, and um, you know our next meeting is the tenth. So um, what we could offer is for Casey to come to our next meeting and make a make a case for this, and um, you know if that's something that seems logical to do, or you know uh, I'm asking for guidance here. So, so um, they, it, it, it's clear then that they're not going to meet the March 1st deadline. No, it's not a March 1st. No, no, no. I'm talking about the grant writer part. They, they will meet. If I go back to them and say, you need to write into your proposal that we're looking to, which would be an open, transparent way to do it. We're looking to ask you if you would give us $10,000 of your administrative fund to hire a grant writer as part of the proposal. We'd have that on March first. If no, that's what we think we should do, I'm I'm, I'm looking for guidance. Uh, if we don't like the idea at all, then I can tell her that the, the preponderance of people didn't like the idea. Uh, you, I'm looking for a way to make this transparent. If that's because yeah. the town is going to pursue what they want to pursue, so I'm you trying know, to give Alan. You know, do you know Tim whether uh, there's precedent for this or that we could ask Stuart? Uh... Stuart is, uh, I've had, I've pushed this question to Stuart and it, 
his initial, whenever I have a communication with Stuart, it's an interesting process. Um, I ask a question and he asks me several questions and then I respond to those questions. And so I'm in the response phase and I'm, I, yeah. I'm, I'm planning to call him tomorrow because you know, he's busy right now too. So, but his initial response was that, yes, this is something that is done. Um, grant writers are paid. And he was asking, is it for a specific project that the CPA would support? And so the answers to all those questions are, yes, this is targeted at one project and so on. So I'll know more tomorrow and I'll share that feedback from Stuart, Annalee. Yeah, in the, in the effort of uh, transparency, I don't know when CCI is meeting next, but I wonder if, you know, we were able to pull together something that vaguely said, you know, we do have some administrative funds, they might be available for various things like do, 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 do. If you're interested, man, you got to, you know, let us know by, I don't know, March 25th or February 25th, you know, that's, well, February 25th is two days. But, um, you know, I mean, maybe there's a way that we could accomplish the transparency in a way that could work for this particular request. Yeah, and, and let me say, I'm not, I'm not advocating for doing this. I'm just yeah. presenting what was presented to me and said I would explore it as a possibility. Um, but I agree that CCI is meeting when next one, um, Lily. It meets on the third. The third, and there's there's a March second meeting, and um, so it sounds like what I probably should do first is find out if Stuart what the parameters for doing something like this would be to meet you know this community preservation coalition guidelines, um, and and then share that information with you and possibly the town administrator and the, the applicant. Uh, Lily? How much administrative money do we get every year? Because I'm pretty sure we never spend it. And has it been accumulating over the years or does it roll back in and we get a set amount every year? How, how does that work? It, we, we usually um, set aside $15,000, which is less than the 5% that we could. Um, and then it rolls back in if we don't use it within the one year period. So it's a rolling we appropriate. And then that's one of the things we make a motion for every year at town, town meeting. And, and we always explain that if we don't expend any of the money, it goes back into the general fund um, for unallocated. So this would earmark 10,000. 10, is that right? I'm sorry. I can't remember if it was 10 or 15, but I, when I spoke to, um, Brenda Hill, I was in, in with the accountant yesterday and Casey was in there um, and she said that we had 14,500 in the account right now. I don't know if she charged. It was 15,000. Yeah. There's My no recollection that there was 15,000 that we have traditionally done, but it could have been 10,000 for this cycle. I, I, but yeah. Brenda said there was 14,500 in the account. Um, and I'm not sure what we've paid out of it. Um, it and when does it renew again? Because if we're going to do the infographic, that'll be. That's why, yeah. It, that's covered, right? Yeah, the, the infographic. So I, don't see us, I don't see us spending $4,000 on the infographic. No. Hope not. Um, no. But unless other people have a different idea about that would seem like a lot of hours. Um, but yeah. I guess it all depends on on how detailed and in you know, how, how creative you want to get, right? Exactly, yeah. If you want to get uh, detailed, you're going to lose the general public. Yeah, true. Yeah, so I mean, obviously, that's the other question. We got to focus what we're trying to do and, and be, be fair to the uh, people who are trying to help us. Um, but yeah, every year we get in a new sum for administrative. So okay. it's, an, it's a yearly thing. And many years, I don't think the committee's ever spent any of that money. Yeah, so. Cool. Um, it does seem like a good use of it to me, I, um, especially if it can be arranged that it comes out of their <clears throat> application ultimately or something. But I, it does seem like good use of the money, but it does seem like they should apply to use it. I don't know. That's kind of weird. 
Um, yeah, I mean, that's that's a perfectly legitimate recommendation. It's certainly something I could share with uh, Julie Chalfant if she's the one that she seems to be the one writing the grant of the proposal for this project um, and say, look, if the town wants to explore this possibility because they need funds now before the town meeting. See, it's not a thing about um, it's, right. it's a thing about we could improve this now, but the grants application deadlines already passed. So what what's the point? Um, but the transparency part is the, the real issue. And um, yeah. so we've always yeah. been pretty, always been pretty cautious about, um, yeah, those deadlines, just especially if it's the town that's trying to get around it. It, uh, it doesn't right. look well, you look good for it, it feels like a hustle. And this is the second year that, you know, Big decisions have come on short notice. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think what, what we're seeing here is small town, um, inadequate administrative functions, not being able, you know, people are overworked. I mean, this yeah. is like um, sure. what's happening in the health field with COVID, you know, there's just too much work to do and not enough people. And, and that's been a, a problem for the town for as long as I've been here. Um, Sure, as long as all of us have been here. Um, so that, I, that's why I just, I'm, I'm sorry, Tim. Go ahead. No, please. No, I was just going to say that that's why I think it is important to have the right kind of structure and oversight around it and whatever governance, because if it does repeat or if you set a precedence, what's going to happen later, right? So I think it is it is kind of creating what we think is appropriate and then rolling that out for whatever, you know, kind of future period. And then again, I, I think, you know, we, we mentioned transparency. I think it's just making sure that that process is understood. So. Yeah. So what should I, what should I put forward? I mean, cause there is the, should I just tell them that it doesn't look like this is going to happen for this cycle because we don't have the governance in place and we don't, um, you know, even though we think this project is, is probably worthy um, and it's going to benefit a lot of people. Um, we need to we need to have a, a governance structure that we don't have right now. Or is that what we're saying, or are we saying please include your app? You know, in your make an ask on March first when you put in your. I mean, or do we say select board? No, that's not a good idea. Uh, <laughs> that's like select board I, making a deal with us. You know, so we're in an odd spot here. I I think it 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 doesn't hurt to if if they um have the capability to make a reasonable pr proposal, um, there's nothing to prevent them from submitting something anyway um, and tell them that we need to vet the, the process a little bit and the, and the you know, do, do they have a grant writer in mind or you know, just whatever kinds of details uh, because we can always say, no, this isn't ready to go forward and we can't do it. And um, what about um, Annalie? Yeah, and I would, I guess I would say, although this makes it a little bit more complicated, but if in fact we know all of the people who are going to be submitting grant proposals to us, maybe we would give everyone the same opportunity to, you know, sort of borrow against their hoped for funds. That's uh, an interesting idea. I, I am, um, also it occurred to me that if, if any one of those people applicants comes forward and, and they, they wanted to try and do what Annalie suggested. Is there any way that they could write an application that would say, um, what was that? Uh, who was the guy that always said, I'll gladly pay you tomorrow for a hamburger, for a hamburger today? today. Oh, wimpy. 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 Yeah. Right. I'll pay you today um, for a hamburger today. <laughs> is there any way that we could have let's just focus on the, the grammar school project, them right in their proposal um, that we are doing this in the understanding that if this is approved, that this will be part of the deal. But if it's not approved and you've spent the money on this grant writer, that the town has to take it out of their own reserve fund and put it back into CPC. I mean, I don't know that that's a good idea either. I'm just kicking things around. I'm, I'm actually going to sign off now. Um, I don't know that we can resolve this. Yeah. Um, and it, it is getting a... Two things. Next meeting is March 10th. March 10th? Right. And okay. is, 
That's that's in the applications, unless we have to feel yeah, that's have right. another meeting. Okay. And 630 is working good for you, Lily. Anyone else have a problem with 630? No, 630 is good. No, I forgot again that though, and it was automatically, I signed on at six o'clock and I said, wait a minute, I'm the only person here. What's going on? <laughs> yeah, and you weren't so, even in your room. You were wandering around and you were. Yeah. <laughs> I think and we won't uh, approve our mi minutes until the next meeting because Ben, yeah, I don't think you've still gotten minutes, you know, I, I sent them to you way too late, Tim. But I think Alan makes a great deal of sense. If they want to make us, you know, dance through hoops on short notice, they should do the work, not us. I yeah, and you know, and I, I don't think that there was any necessary intent here. It was just people finding out about opportunities for money that could help preserve. $400,000 of CPC money in the future, but now they don't have access to it because they don't, even the, even the town administrators don't have the ability to just take money and spend it. That's you know, right. They can't take it out. They can't take it out of the reserve fund without going to a special town meeting. So all of us have, are, you know, so, all right. Well, I know Alan, you got to go. So would, um, would someone like to make a motion to adjourn the meeting? I so move. I second. There's a moved and seconded. Uh, everybody, anybody opposed? <laughs> All right, no one's opposed. So I will call the meeting to close at 7.27 PM. Thank you so much and uh, share the information you promised to share. Uh, and I will do the same. Thank you, Tim. Thank, Thank you. you. Good, night, Good night, everybody. Bye.